2023 season finale was held at Snetterton this season and all drivers were looking forward to what was hopefully going to be a very exciting season finale. It was cold, but at least it was sunny and dry for this last event of the season around the Norfolk track. A few drivers hadn't made it over to this season finale event, but fortunately we did have big grids across the whole event, seeing over 40 drivers take to the grid for the first race after the qualifying which was held on the Saturday afternoon. Two separate qualifying sessions were held, one for the Intermarks and one for the Super Saloon and Tin Tops. Starting with the latter, it would be an interesting qualifying session at the top of the Super Saloons and Tin Tops. And there was a three-way battle for pole position between Adrian Bradley in his BMW, Alex Sidwell in his Holden and Rob Burley in his BMW. But eventually it would end in that order, a great pole position for Adrian in his BMW. Burley only completed three laps due to a clutch issue and Alex Sidwell right at the front once again in his V8 Commodore. Exciting to see what he can do around this very fast Snetterton 300 circuit. Behind them, it would be fourth and fifth times for Paul Watson and Ronan Bradley in their BMWs. They were followed by Lee Maddock, who had a great performance in his Pontiac Ascar. Next was Mark Cripps, followed by Marcus Bicknell, the highest placing tin top Chris Bassett in ninth, and Dave Avis, James Hunt, Daniel Fisher, Martin Scott, and Jack Whitehead, who led Class C. T1 leader was Bob Hosier in 15th, followed by Dave Charlton. I was in 17th position in Class TP, ahead of Gideon September, Graham Richardson and Steve Dan. Alex Quash T was in 21st position, leading Class T3, ahead of Rick Skelsey, James Seal, Ian Seal, Lee Clough and Paul Restall in 26th position of the Super Saloon and Tin Tops. For the Intermark Silhouettes, we'd have a slightly smaller than expected grid. Unfortunately, we're missing Ian Hales, another of the West Country drivers, and unfortunately make the long trek over to Norfolk. And in the end, it will be Daniel Smith topping the timesheets with Colin Smith back in his Janetta, second quickest. Paul Knight was third, but a gearbox issue would prevent him from racing, so he was disappointed to withdraw. An impressive fourth for Scott Abrigliano in his Peugeot 206, followed by Phil Spinks in his Vauxhall Tigra, Mick Robertson in the Volkswagen Corrado. Senior runners were filling the next five positions, which were Chris Ayling, John Price, Baz Johnson, Volker Tim and Stephen Phillips in the Fiesta. Only doing one lap time were Lewis and Richard Smith both having issues in their Mercedes. For the races, the Intermark Silhouette would have a 10 second lead out front ahead of the Super Saloon and Tin Tops as this would allow a separate grid and hopefully separate racing between the two main grids of cars. Both groups had a orderly start with Daniel Smith leading Colin Smith and Phil Spinks in the Intermark Silhouettes and it was Sidwell leading a group with Bassett in. An absolutely fantastic start for the Peugeot driver right up with the Super Saloons on this cold morning in October. So he had a fantastic start and we also saw the Bradley brothers battling on the opening lap with Burley slipping back with his issues with his clutch recurring in the race after qualifying. At the front of both, Lewis and Richard Smith were carving their way through the field, quickly making their way up to second and third respectively. Sidwell was amongst the Intermark silhouettes after a really great race, showing great performance in his Holden Commodore. Overall, it would be a fantastic race, lots of great battles throughout the field. Eventually, it would be Lewis Smith taking the overall win, 23 seconds ahead of Richard Smith in his Mercedes SLK, both winning the Intermark and Intermark Senior classes respectively. Phil Spinks was next up in third position ahead of Colin Smith in fourth. Alex Sidwell climbed his way through a good amount of the intermarks to finish in fifth place overall ahead of Scott Abrigliano, Mick Robertson and Adrian Bradley was next, eighth place overall winning Class B. Lee Mannix, a fantastic performance for him in his Pontiac Grand Prix. He carved his way through the field to finish in ninth position ahead of Chris Ayling and Paul Watson back in his BMW M3 finishing second within Class B. Rona Bradley was next in his BMW followed by Peter Selden in his BMW E36 M3, the Class D winner ahead of Baz Johnson and Chris Bassett winning the tin tops. He was 15th place overall, quite far ahead of the next tin top, which was all the way down in 21st. Behind him was Jack Whitehead, who won Class C. 
Then came James Hunt. Stephen Phillips finished in 18th position ahead of Rod Burley, who did win Class A despite his clutch issues. Steve Down was next, second within Class D, ahead of Gideon September, another Class T1 victory for him, ahead of Graham Richardson. I was in 23rd, ahead of Rick Skelsey, Alex Cork T in 25th, ahead of James Seal, and Ian Seal rounding up the finishers. We had some non-finishers and non-starters. Unfortunately, not finishing the race would be Daniel Smith, Martin Scott, Marcus Bicknell, John Price, Mark Cripps, Dave Avis, Paul Restall, and unfortunately the non-starters were Volker Tim and Daniel Fisher. Having a quick glance at the fastest laps, Lewis Smith was fastest outright with a 201.7. His lap time was quite comparable to Alex Sidwell in the Commodore, a 203.7. Adrian Bradley, very impressive performance in his BMW M3, 206.1. Chris Bassett, the fastest tin top, a 211.2 ahead of the Class D winning car. Peter Selden's fastest lap of a 211.4. Also fastest laps in there for Phil Spinks and the seniors. And then also for Jack Whitehead in Class C, Rob Burley in Class A, James Seal within Class TP, Rick Skelsey, the fastest lap within Class T1, and Alex Kwok T with the fast lap within class T3. We will have a review of the second race at Snetterton within the coming days. A very exciting season finale, lots of great racing throughout that one, so it'll be a very exciting video that we'll bring to you very shortly. But thanks to all that tuned in for this one, thanks to all that put on a great event at Snetterton, and we'll see you in a couple of days' time for the second race, the season finale, the last race of the season at Snetterton. Goodbye. Goodbye.